The patrons have spoken, and this time they've picked Cryogonal. It's an interesting Pokemon design-wise. It's a terrifying face peering through ice crystals in the shape of a snowflake. Those who played Pokemon Black and White in-game will also remember facing it when going up against gym leader Bryson. Fun fact, by the way, Cryogonal learns several moves that don't really make sense with its design at all, and why this is is never explained. How does this thing use Solar Beam, or Night Slash, Poison Jab, and Flash Cannon for that matter? We don't know. What we do know, however, is how how Cryogonal performed in the competitive scene. So let us explore the answers to the question, how good was Cryogonal actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. From day one of its debut generation, Cryogonal impressed players with its myriad of excellent traits. A superb base 105 speed stat, a monstrous base 135 special defense stat to go alongside one of the most important moves in the game, Rapid Spin, and the capacity to keep itself healthy with Recover. It also had Levitate as an ability, which was incredible, as not only did it hover above spikes and toxic spikes as a result, it gained an immunity to Earthquake too. Cryogonal even had a solid base 95 special attack stat, with which it could use one of the best stabs in the game, Ice Beam, meaning it wouldn't just be a passive wall. These were undeniably excellent traits to have. Sadly, Cryogonal was completely unable to make use of them as well as it would have liked because it was plagued by several other traits, just as significant, except these were incredibly detrimental. That same typing which blessed it with stab Ice Beam also ensured it was hindered by all that which plagues the Ice type defensively, most notably a weakness to Stealth Rock, which would significantly impede its attempts to Rapid Spin. Its Rock's weakness wasn't the only thing to hinder its longevity either. That phenomenal special defense stat was somewhat offset by its decidedly meager base 70 HP stat. Furthermore, it had an utterly pathetic base 30 defense, which meant it was utterly terrified of any physical attack that wasn't Earthquake. But Cryo's positive traits were still great. It just needed to find the right tier for them. It didn't have a chance in OU, and UU was beyond its reach as well. However, when RU came around, Cryogonal really came into its own. With its huge special bulk, it was able to take on the terrifying special attackers like Lilligant, Sigilyph, and Slowking, and used the switch in opportunity to clear the field of hazards. Cryogonal was quite an effective spinner too. While it didn't want to switch into Stealth Rock, Drudagon, Golurk, or Rhydon, nor would Drudagon, Golurk, or Rhydon want to switch back into it. So once it got the spin off the field, it would be clear for some time. Additionally, the most common spin blockers, Rotom and the aforementioned Golurk, got slammed by Cryogonal's Ice Beam, and as a bonus, Rotom couldn't hurt it at all in return. Furthermore, Cryogonal was so physically frail, it was effectively weak to pursue, and this was a big deal considering how good Escavalier and Spiritomb were, especially since the latter also blocked Rapid Spin and took Ice Beams quite well. However, Cryogono could help shore up its defense stat with Reflect, allowing it to play the long game and attempt to outlast the Pursuiters in conjunction with the Spikes or against Tomb, Toxic Spikes, that Cryogono was often paired with. Indeed, it was a fixture on RU Stall, an integral piece of their foundation valued for both its defensive capabilities in taking on major threats and in removing hazards so the rest of its teams could function. Speaking of spikes, Cryogonal was also a great spinner because it could take on the tier's most common spikers, Pullfish and Roselia, quite well. And of course, it was unbothered by the spikes and toxic spikes they laid down. Stall was also a great fit for Cryogonal because it paired well with Wish users like Licky Licky, Clefable, and Alomomola, helping it offset its Stealth Rock weakness without being forced to spend a turn using Recover, allowing it to focus more on its primary function of Rapid Spin. Cryogonal was also immensely valuable at ensuring the tier didn't completely collapse against hail teams before those were banned for their obscene dominance. Whereas before its ice typing was largely a curse, here it was a blessing. Pretty much everything else in the tier got shattered by hail abusing antics, but Cryogonal not only shrugged off Glaceon's mighty specs blizzards, it actually got leftovers recovery in hail, which was huge. Part of why hail was so irritating was that even if you withstood blizzard with a steel, fire, or water type resist, you wouldn't get lefties recovery, which made it immensely difficult to not crumple under pressure over the course of the game. There were two other Pokemon which healed in Hail as well. One was Clefable, which was obliterated by Specs Blizzards, and the other was Overcoat Escavalier, which was far less specially bulky than Cryo, and couldn't reliably heal itself, and was terrified of the quadruple effective Hidden Power Fire from the Hail Abusers, a move which Cryogonal more or less laughed at. Cryogonal even turned the opponent's Hail to its advantage. Suddenly, it could use Blizzard on its own as Stab, allowing it to really crush Ghost-types attempting to block its Rapid Spin. Speaking of alternative 
alternative Ice Stab, Cryogonal always wanted more than the four moves it was allotted at a time. As a result, Frost Breath Cryo was born. The idea was to combine Ice Beam and Haze. Frost Breath always scored a critical hit, meaning that it could fairly reliably cut through special defense boosts to beat the likes of Quiver Dance Lilligant and Calm Mind Scissor Lift without needing to spend a move slot on Haze. Frost Breath was 40 base power in Gen 5, meaning with the double damage crit rate, it hit 80 base power and was thus significantly weaker than the at the time 95 base power of Ice Beam, which meant that Frost Breath didn't 100% outclass it. However, the extra utility meant it was potentially worthwhile for stall teams, which were always attempting to tighten their defensive systems against the varied offensive threats they were going up against. Now, Cryo could freely run, reflect, and be more secure against Pursuit while still checking Lilligan and Scissor Lift, which are two of Stall's biggest threats. Now, while Cryogonal's most common defining use was as a crucial piece of Stall teams, that was far from all it could do. It could put its outstanding speed and solid special attack set to use with an offensive set. It was especially good at turning the tables on two of its biggest enemies. Its invested Icicle Plate boosted Ice Beam sliced through Spirit Tomb, and with Stealth Rocket easily 2-hit KO'd the more popular offensive sets and 3-hit KO'd the defensive sets, which were lacking in reliable recovery. Meanwhile, as Cavalier dropped to Hidden Power Fire, Cryogonal was quite a decent threat in its own right. Its Ice Beam was so strong that it cleanly 2-hit KO'd Moltres, and it outsped it by a mile, so forget using Moltres as a switch-in in the way you might use against Bulky Cryo. Several common offensive resists didn't want to take the hit, either. Durant was cleanly 2-hit KO'd, Cobletops had a chance of being 2-hit KO'd from full health with Stealth Rock, Magneton the same, and also got slammed by Hidden Power Fire. Cryogonal even outsped Sigilith, which was already considered one of the tier's speedier threats, and it didn't even need anything close to max speed to do so, allowing it to invest in a little bulk. As a result, Cryogonal could be quite a threat. Of course, impressive damage calculations don't mean anything if the Pokemon capable of them can't hit the field and position itself to dish them out, as per the Rampardo theorem. But that was the beauty of offensive Cryogonal. In addition to its aforementioned fantastic speed, it took special hits quite well even without significant bulk investment, ensuring it had plenty of opportunity. Furthermore, even when Cryo faced a wall it couldn't break through, such as Alomomola or Slowking, that was just fine, because that allowed it to pull off Rapid Spin. It was the perfect blend of offensive threat and team support, which allowed Cryogonal to slot beautifully onto offensive teams as well. It was a fantastic alternative to the de facto spinner on offense, Kabutops, as its enormous speed increase allowed it to spin much more easily. Of course, Cryogonal's problems were significant, and it couldn't always overcome them. Namely, its Stealth Rock weakness, its vulnerability to physical moves very much including Pursuit, and its inability to fit all the moves it would like into its moveset, or EVs for that matter. It would love all of more defense, special defense, and speed on its trademark defensive set, while anything to be less of a complete paper tissue physically on the offensive set would be pleasant. However, in spite of these issues, Cryogonal thrived, and was one of the best, most common, important, and defining Pokemon throughout Generation 5 Are You. Generation 6 helped with the often overwhelming crisis of Entry Hazard Barrage that had plagued Generation 5 by buffing Defog. Suddenly, Rapid Spin was no longer the only way to get rid of hazards. Sure, Defog got rid of your own as well, but that was a worthwhile price to pay for the greater distribution and especially the fact that it could not be blocked by ghost types. Eager to move away from the Spin Ghost Pursuit Triangle into new modes of hazard removal, the player base eschewed spinners for much of the generation, and Cryogonal was very much a victim of that. It was tough to justify the physically frail, stealth rock weak rapid spinner over the much easier to use defoggers running around everywhere. As such, Cryogonal didn't come anywhere near reprising its role in RU. It couldn't even make any sort of impact in NU. Thankfully, Generation 6 also introduced the PU tier, and even more thankfully, Cryogonal was able to eke out a niche there. But it was just barely. If you were going to use an ice type in Gen 6 PU, there were several better options, and odds were you were going to use Rotom Frost, which is unquestionably a top 2 Pokemon in the tier, and an utterly monstrous defensive threat, or Articuno, whose sub roost set was one of the most devastating threats around, or even Lapras, who had an effective choice spec set. Sure, getting rid of rocks was nice for the benefit of great Pokemon like Altaria and Driplin, and to do so without getting rid of one's own hazards was something nobody would say no to, but the problem was Cryogonal's defensive profile was far too limited to make it worth using in this role, compared to the tier's defoggers, particularly Vibrava, whose stealth rock resistance made it hard to pass up in a favor of a stealth rock weak Pokemon. It's Especially since Cryogonal didn't exactly fearlessly switch into common rockers like Golem. Its stealth rock weakness would be felt, and you'd be wondering why you weren't using an ice type that made this weakness more worth than its detriments. Cryogonal's defensive profile was decent, and it was actually quite good against the likes of Floatso, Mr. Mime, and Rotom Frost until it got Volt switched on with Roxa, 
up or sidetracked or waterfalled. Even the few Pokemon it checked got by it pretty easily. Thus, Cryogonal wasn't used much despite technically having a decent niche in Gen 6 PU. Strangely enough, Cryogonal actually was better in the subsequent generation of PU. Bizarre though that may seem, since most Pokemon that get worse proceed to spiral downwards uncontrollably, Cryogonal actually held quite a high position in Gen 7 PU, similar to its renowned tenure in Gen 5 RU. Its rapid spinning capabilities were highly appreciated in a metagame with such an emphasis on spikes. You'd still want to deal with your opponent's hazards, but since you took the time for multiple layers of your own, you prefer to not undo your own hard work with the fog. Incidentally, Cryogonal could learn Defog now, so if you didn't feel like playing games against would-be spin blockers and didn't mind potentially removing your own hazards, you could take the simpler route. But why use Cryogonal if not to spin and maintain those hazards? If you're going to Defog, why not something like Sovali Fairy? Actually, for that matter, why use Cryo to spin at all? Alolan Sand Slash was Stealth Rock Neutral, and Hitmonchan was Stealth Rock Resistant. Well, Cryogonal wasn't just a hazard clearing machine in Gen 7 PU, it was also a superb defensive Pokemon. It was a fantastic answer to Oricorio E and G. It was also absolutely excellent against Ludicolo, and while Cryogonal didn't hard counter much else, it helped play around a significant number of other common threats like Aurorus, Abomasnow, Rotom Frost, and Victory Bell. It could also be quite a threat itself with its offensive set. It maintained its great defensive capabilities just with its natural bulk and typing. Sure, it could use quite a solid utility set more centered on utility and bulk, but Cryogonal generally got more mileage by focusing on its offensive potential. Before, it hadn't gotten a chance to make much valuable use of the freeze dry it had gained in the previous generation but in this metagame more hospitable to cryo's talents it capitalized on this amazing tool an ice move that not only wasn't resisted by water but hit them super effectively was absolutely incredible both cutting down a resist and increasing Cryogonal's already superb, super effective coverage. Freeze Dry was incredibly spammable, which was boosted further if it used Metronome as its item. The reliability of Icicle Plate was always there, but Cryogonal also made superb use of Icium Z, as its sub zero slammer let it smash through would be checks like Skunk Tank or Assault Vest Electros, or ensuring it beat Calm Mind boosted Oricorials. With Hidden Power Fire's coverage, the likes of Ferroseed, Alolan Sandslash, or Crabominable wouldn't want to come near it, leaving Cryogonal free to terrorize nearly everything else with its powerful freeze dries. In addition to this, Cryogonal's hazard game was quite strong. While it didn't always want to switch into the hazard setters, no hazard setter really wanted to switch into it. Ferris Seed, Alolan Sandslash, Mudgedale, Torterra, Quillfish, even Regirock, which wasn't outright threatened, still wasn't exactly comfortable with standing its boosted freeze dries. Furthermore, none of the tier's ghost types, Jellicent, Golurk, and Oricorio G, wanted to come anywhere near those same freeze dries. As such, Cryogonal was excellent at helping its team defensively, and posing a threat offensively. This latter trait was especially great at letting it get rid of hazards and ensuring they stayed off for a while. There were several other ice types in Generation 7 PU, but that didn't stop Cryogonal from excelling, as it was one of the very best. Generation 8 brought heavy duty boots. What a perfect item seemingly designed for Cryogonal. Wait, what's that? If an item can bypass hazards, you don't need a Pokemon to remove hazards to begin with? Oh, right. That makes sense. As a result of this, Cryogonal was just about never used in Generation 8. Some players tried to find niches for it in PU, and yeah, technically it could scrape out some sort of spinning roll so its teammates wouldn't have to run boots, but this was far less efficient than just running boots on those Pokemon, whose immediacy in being threatening far outweighed the benefits of a team slot dedicated to clearing hazards before they could be unleashed. It wasn't much of an offensive threat either. It hit decently, but only if it used Icicle Plate, and that meant it wasn't running boots, and was thus easier for all the boots using Pokemon surrounding it to outlast it. Perhaps if Z-Moves were still around, it'd be a different story. However, as it stood, Cryogonal was used so little, even all the way down in PU, that it dropped to the lowest depths a fully evolved Pokemon could. That of being untiered, meaning that it was actively not recommended for use in any singles tier. Ouch. In its newfound ignoring of hazards, Generation 8 more or less completely passed over the Pokemon, which had spent several generations fighting to remove them. It's still incredibly early in Generation 9, let alone Generation 9 UU, but in the tier's infancy, some players have been using Cryogonal that terrestrializes into Steel-type. Turns out, when you go from the worst defensive type in the game to the best, that does wonders for your viability, especially when you're a Steel-type with Levitate. Cryogonal primarily sits on Quagsire and Gastrodon, happily rapid-spinning away the hazards they now spam, not even afraid of Toxic with its newfound Steel-typing. But who knows how things will progress from the time of this video. If terrestrializing 
pricing will stick around at all or how it'll change, let alone metagame developments irrespective of Terra. But for now, it's nice to see Cryo in UU, which incidentally is its highest tier placement ever. And that's it. So how good was Cryogonal actually? Well, it's had its ups and downs, but overall, it had a solid career. It helped define the brand new tier of its debut generation, contributing to the fresh feel that the widely beloved tier had. It hit rocky patches in Gen 6 PU, and especially Gen 8, where it wasn't even good enough for a cursory PU role, but it also excelled in Generation 7 PU in a pleasant subversion of the trope where Pokemon just continuously got worse over time. So hopefully, Cryogonal will see success once again in Generation 9. Thanks for watching, everyone and thank you so much to the patrons for continued support of our videos and for voting for this Pokemon for this month's patron pick. And if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to Fall Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Cryogonal? What would you give it besides Terrestrializing Steel to make it viable? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And follow my career on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.